Hello everyone, so I'm here today to do another video of my bike backlisted um, list of recommendations and if you don't know what this is, it's a series that I started a few months ago in which I pick a decade um, of backlisted books and I talked about them um, and for this video I'm going to focus on the 19, so books that have been published between 1990 and 1999. There's not a specific number of books that I discuss, it's just how many I could gather and at the end I will also tell you one book from that time that I really want to print. So the first book for, of the 90s that I have to discuss is The Social Meaning of Money by Viviana Sodeser and this is a non-fiction book that um, discusses the role of money on women's um, emancipation, so how it used to be that women could not have money and that also relates to why our pants don't have pockets, for example, um, and things like that. And then it goes slow, slowly about how women uh, gain the right to work and not be shamed by working and how uh, we are now also allowed to own property and things like that, but still also talks about how much more we have to go. So yeah, I really like this one. I thought it was really deep and really um, really interesting and I think I, I never thought about, but um, I thought it was really, really uh, insightful. And for me, at least, it was not dated at all. I read a 10-year anniversary edition, which had uh, some extra information about how things are or are not changing right now. Um, so yeah, I would recommend that one. I think it was really, really brilliant. Uh, the next one I have is A Fine Balance by Rohinson Ministry, which is a classic of Indian literature, I will say, or it will become a classic whenever the right amount of time has passed. <laughs> um, and this one is about um, we follow different characters um, in India and how they are fighting to survive and we have some people that are more lower class and some people that are more higher class um, and basically how how they interact, they are all interconnected, their stories are all interconnected but I, what I liked about this one is basically that it sucks you into this world and you feel like you're there, you really do feel like you're there and it's it's brilliant, I think you should definitely read it, especially if you are interested in anything Indian. Uh, this is a must read. Um, the next one is an interesting one. It's The Intuitionist by Colson Whitehead. Um, this, I think, is one of his first books, and I read it with my book club. Um, and it's interesting because the later books of Colson Whitehead I have not connected to, and this is actually the first one that I con felt like I connected with. And if it's about elevators, which sounds weird, I know, but um, basically there are like it's an alternative technological world, sci-fi-ish world in which elevators um, work, but they are not kind of hundred percent sure how they work. So there is two theories of how they work and how they should be fixed and we follow this woman that is an intuitionist in one of those streams and she's black and we see how she's treated because of uh, her being black she's like the second intuitionist that is black um, and it's really interesting I, I found it really interesting I never thought that I would say that about a book about elevators but um, it was interesting um, I'm kind of crazy <laughs> The next one I want to talk about is Wicked by Gregory Maguire, um, which is uh, was published in 1995. That's a long time ago. Um, but yeah, uh, this one I think it's pretty famous. There's also a musical and maybe a movie, I don't know. But it follows um, the Wicked uh, Witch of the West, I think. The Wicked Witch in, in the Wizard of Oz um, story. And it's an alternative story of how she became the Wicked Witch and how she was bullied when she was little and then she became an activist in university and things like that. It's kind of, it's kind of uh, cool how they managed to, to make that story out of 
such a simple children's book. Um, but yeah, I, I would recommend. I think it's a lot of fun. Um, the next one I have in my list is Blindness by Jose Saramago, which was published in 1995. Um, and this one, I mean, Jose Saramago is a very um, ideas-based uh, author. Um, he, he, it's not so much about the plots, it's more about the ideas that he wants to put out. Um, blindness is about this city in which everyone suddenly goes blind and how things and mechanics of that city change based on that, that blindness. And I think his books are really dense, so you have to be prepared to read very dense like block of text kind of books, but the ideas that he puts forward are so out there and so well thought out that I find his books really insightful, even though if it takes me a long time to read them because they are so dense. Um, the next one I have is The Famish Road by Ben Okri, which was published in 1991 and won the Booker that year, I think. And this one um, I actually read more recently than all of the other ones. Um, and it is about this boy called Azaro that has kind of a connection with the world of spirits and how that affects his life. Um, but also it is a very political book because his father gets um, wrapped into politics. They are a, a relatively poor family. so. He doesn't have a lot of money and a lot of comfort and his father is not happy with that. So that's why he goes into politics. So there is a lot of politics about and the Nigerian status of poor people and rich people and how that divide happens and how politics uh, encourages that divide. And I really, really like it. I think it's quite magical, so if you don't like magical realism, maybe this one is not for you, but I think that if you can handle that, it's a really good book. And it has, um, it's a part of a trilogy, the first one of a trilogy, so if you like it, you have more to come, which is great. And then the last one that I have in my list is My Year of Myths by Ruth Oseki. So Ruth Oseki is particularly famous but, uh, for the the book uh, A Tale for the Time Being, uh, but actually this one I found it more interesting. So My Year of Myths is about this woman in America with Japanese descent and she is making documentaries of like the perfect American family for Japanese television. And in that perfect American family she always has to include meat because one of the sponsors of the show is a meat producer. Um, and we see all of the politics of meat and how it is produced and how it is perceived both in America and in Japan. And I think the discussions that go back and forth in that, in that sense, they are amazing. Um, and yeah, I think that if you are interested in animal rights and meat production, this book is great for you, but also it is a good story. The, I think I found the, the characters quite relatable and I, I think it's just a really good book and everyone should read it because it's important. Um, and I don't think it's talk, talked about enough. Those are the books that I have read that I would recommend from the 90s. Um, the book I want to to talk about as I want to read this one that is very intimidating and that is A Suitable Boy by Bikram Seth. Um, this one is basically, I think, like um, it's like 1500 pages about this family and this, this family wanted to marry a girl with a certain boy that is suitable for their family or whatever um, because of arranged marriages in India um, and as far as uh, that's more or less what I know um, I'm sure there's a lot more going on and it gives you an insight into the Indian culture and Indian arranged marriages uh, but yeah I think it's it's also becoming one one of those that is gonna be a classic at some point and I want to read it even if it's really long and intimidating 
Um, maybe this summer I'll find time. We will see. Um, but yeah, those are all the books I wanted to talk to you about, about uh, from the 90s. Let me know if you have read any, if you have thoughts on any. Um, and let me know if you want to body read A Suitable Boy, because it's uh, very, very big and it will help.